Hi, my name is Catherine, and I just graduated from the University of Waterloo's computer science program. Crazy, so crazy. Time has really just flown by. And when thinking back over the five past five years, I realized I've changed a lot and also learned a lot along the way. So here are 10 things that I wish I knew before starting the computer science program. I hope that these tips can help you shape your university experience into everything that you want it to be. And if you're going to University of Waterloo coming up, I honestly wish you the best. I had such a great time and I hope you do too. The first thing I wish I knew is that early efforts pay huge dividends when it comes to securing your first co-op or your first big tech job. So with Waterloo, co-op is such a big deal and I'm sure that's what everyone is so curious about. And personally for me, I had never had any CS related job experience or volunteering experience. I pretty much started my CS journey when I got to university. So I felt several steps behind a lot of people who are already like super stacked in experience going into the program. And when it came to my first job search, it was definitely super daunting, but I wish I knew that the first one is the hardest and it gets easier. And there's so many things that you can do to kind of like pad up on your experience, things such as side projects or hackathons. Those are all great examples of you showing initiative to code something in your own free time. It also shows that you can like manage a project on your own and can create things with your own direction and problem solve on your own. So it shows, shows a lot of great qualities that these companies are looking for, especially when it comes to your first internship. I think I also would tell myself that quality over quantity, it's much better to have one big project that's well thought out and built with a lot of features rather than having 10 full stack website projects because you're all showing the same thing with those five projects. Attacking onto that, I think having Lee code experience, it's honestly it's unavoidable, although it's not representative of what you'll be doing on the job. This is like a standardized method of testing used by a lot of companies, especially when it comes to breaking into your first big tech job. And so I would honestly say start early. Like it pays, your efforts pay dividends later on because your brain starts to recognize the patterns. You start to understand and recognize things more and it leads you to do better later on in your interviews. So if you can start early, especially if you're trying to break into big tech early on, get started with Lee coding. I wish I started earlier, honestly. If you want more advice on how I got my first job or any more specific internship advice, I feel like I could talk for an hour about this. So drop a comment and let me know. I would love to make a video about it and kind of like relay some of my experiences. My second tip would be to take risks. This is the best time to do so. I think specifically relating to co-op, taking risks with your job. You have six chances to explore new companies, new cultures, new types of work, different places to live. So if you can kind of try to get a taste of different realities and see what you like, I think it would go a long way in determining where you want to settle down for your full-time job or later on in life. Personally, when I was in third year, I was debating taking a job in Austin, Texas, and this would have been my first job away from home. So I was extremely scared and I honestly almost passed on that offer and took a Toronto job instead. But I'm really glad that I took the chance to get out of my comfort zone, go live in Austin, Texas for four months. I don't know when else I would have done that, but I had a great time. I learned a lot. It definitely challenged me in ways that I didn't expect, but I think I became a more confident person because of it when you go through challenges and life experiences on your own and you're able to work through them and problem solve, it definitely builds a sense of like self-accomplishment, I think. So yeah, take risks while you're young. Honestly, I think responsibilities only grow as you grow older. So um, with a four month job, there's an end date. In the worst case scenario, if you don't like it, you can kind of back out and still resume school <clears throat> find another job so it's not the end of the world and i would just urge everyone to explore opportunities that interest you and say yes to things that you wouldn't expect and get outside of your comfort zone the third thing i wish i knew is more of a mindset shift which is that when you enter university you're an adult you're 18 17 18 years old and maybe you'll be living away from home for the first time but you'll be living away from home you have your own independence and your life is really in your own hands starting from now you have the power to make decisions to shape your future. You can explore what you're interested in. There's several different paths that you can take. You can either um, aim for the job that you want. You can build your own company. Waterloo has a lot of resources for that. You can 
travel the world. Honestly, the world is your oyster. And so it's super, super important, I think, to adopt a high agency mindset, which means that you're aware that your actions lead to diff- certain outcomes in your life and you take responsibility for that. And also you take the initiative to work towards the goals that you're looking for. So there's no one telling you what the blueprint to life is anymore. You're going to have to start thinking critically about what success looks like for you. And if you don't know, that's totally fine. No one's expecting you to have all the answers. You can totally start by following the herd perhaps for a little bit and then adjusting as necessary. That's kind of what I did. I got into university. I didn't know what kind of life I wanted to live or what to aim for. So I kind of saw what people around me were doing and took note of what I liked and didn't like and made adjustments accordingly to kind of shape the life that I want and take some time to reflect if what you're doing is moving you one step closer towards that life you're looking to accomplish or if it's not serving you in any way. But yeah, it starts with you and you definitely need to put in the effort. So think about it, be intentional about it, and you have the freedom to build the life you want. My fourth tip would be that mentorship is super, super helpful but don't overthink it and don't make it too formal. This is just from my personal experience, but I found that organic mentorship and organic connections create the best type of relationships. And I feel like both myself and the mentor get the most out of them. Usually I find it most helpful to have a mentor who's a few steps ahead of you in life, not too far, otherwise it seems a little bit out of touch and not relatable. But for example, some of the mentors I've had that have helped me a lot have been people like upper years from clubs that I've joined, Things where we became friends first through what we were working on in the club or even sports. Things where we became friends first. um, And then slowly you can just ask them for advice here and there. Or if they've done something that you're curious about, you can ask them how they did it. But at the end of the day, I've done so many like one-off coffee chats or mentorship programs at school. And I'm not saying that they don't work. Like there's definitely people who have found success from those. But I just found that I never really clicked with the mentor and I didn't really stay in touch with them beyond that one-off coffee chat or beyond the four-month coffee chat program. So this is just what's worked for me. And I think moving forward into my future, I also carry the same mindset of trying to find organic connections in life. All right, tip number five of things that I wish I knew. This is more related to friends and social life. It boils down to wishing I had known that friendship really comes down to consistency and genuine connection. I kind of came into university at an odd time. It was 2020. COVID was still extremely big and residences had really strict rules. I feel like everyone for the sake of safety really formed into cliques and were really staying within their own social circles. So first year was kind of an odd period of time. But after things started opening up again, clubs and whatnot, that's kind of when I started to gain more social footing and find my community that I'm comfortable with and can lean on in times of need. But I would definitely say join clubs, join sports, intramurals, anything where there's like some kind of consistent meeting, such as like a weekly checkup meeting or a weekly intramural game. I think another thing, this is more geared towards first year me. I found that going to class was a good way to make friends. This is more so for first year though, because I think beyond first year, people really start to stop going to class and um, kind of rely on lecture notes and whatnot. I would say for me, some of my best friends throughout all of university were these people that I met from my first math class ever, Math 135. I remember it so clearly, like the first day of school. And I was like, and we didn't become friends, like super good friends right away. But like I kept going to class, kept seeing the same people. And eventually we started hanging out and became friends. And they're some of my very best friends from university to this day. All right. Tip number six, we are halfway through. The next thing I wish I knew is that it is normal for CS assignments to take an absurd amount of time, like hours and hours, and just don't beat yourself up over it, honestly. And also plan accordingly, start early. So again, I did not go into Waterloo with any coding experience, so I felt pretty behind. And I often felt very helpless and a little bit hopeless when doing my computer science assignments because They were really hard for me at the beginning, but I would give myself more patience and trust in the learning that I'm doing at school and just remind myself that, you know, these things are meant to be challenging and they're meant to teach you about how the computer science fundamentals work. So if you're struggling, that's all right. 
go to office hours, ask your professors and TAs for help because that is their job. They want to help you. All right, this leads me really well into my seventh point, which is that it's really, really easy to get caught up in the comparison game here at Waterloo. So be mindful of that and pull yourself out when you feel like you're getting too wrapped up into it. And what I mean by this is that a lot of people at the University of Waterloo, especially in STEM programs like CS, Eng, whatever, are extremely, extremely talented, smart, gifted, and also very high achieving. Everyone is kind of kind of caught up in the cycle of job searching and getting a good job, which is fine. It's fine. Um, I don't know if it's the healthiest looking back, but it definitely is part of the culture just because it's constantly on your mind. It's like if you're not working for four months at your internship, you're in school where you're applying for jobs for four months. And so it's just a never ending cycle. So I don't definitely don't blame the students there for kind of having it on their mind 24 seven. There's two ways that I would approach this, I think. If my younger self wanted actionable advice, I would honestly ask my peers who are where I want to be and ask them how they did it. Hopefully they're nice people and don't get keep and let me know. But yeah, I would see what they're doing differently than what I am to get to where they are and try to implement some of that into my own life. So that's more action-oriented approach. If this is more just like a daily life, like let me be happier in my daily life type of approach, I would say recognize how far you come and be grateful for what you have. And this is where I think making friends from other programs is a huge, huge benefit because like it kind of puts things into perspective. Everyone's struggling with different things, like whether it be a really hard lab assignment that they have due or their job search process, which could be completely different from what I'm experiencing. It kind of just like helps put things into perspective and gets you outside of that CS job bubble a little bit. All right, tip number eight, which is also really closely related to this comparison thing. Um, kind of touching on what I said earlier about being grateful for what you have. There's in this one quote that I saw online a few years ago that's really, really stuck with me, which is, remember the days when you used to wish for what you have now. And that has rung true in like every aspect of my life, every stage of my life, truly. But specifically when I was in university, I would say in first year, it was definitely hard to adjust. But then... I, I really just needed to remind myself, like, when I was a 12th grader, this is all I wanted. I wanted to be in Waterloo CS, and I wanted to work these internships and these cool jobs, and here I am doing it, but I was, like, really stressed or really miserable. I really just needed to remind myself that there were days where this was my dream, and now I'm living the dream that I used to have. So keep your chin up and remember how far you've come and be grateful for that. And also be proud of yourself for what you've accomplished so far. Life can tend, I feel like, sometimes it becomes this like never ending hamster wheel where you're always climbing towards the next thing. But at the same time, I think it's really important to take a step back and just appreciate how far you've come. And yeah, honestly, I still feel this now sometimes. Like I remember my first internship in New York, my fourth internship, I was like, I felt so out of place kind of, and I was really homesick and it just wasn't really what I was expecting. Like it wasn't sunshine and rainbows. I was like, damn, like this sucks. I kind of want this to be over. What's going on? But again, I like there was a time where all I wanted was a big tech internship in New York. And there I was living my dream. And yet again, I was just like kind of caught up in the negative emotions. I think it's just useful to have this little tool of gratitude in your back pocket to help pull yourself out of that negative cycle in case you find yourself there. All right. Tip number nine, which is that loneliness is so real. Um, I feel like these lessons have kind of taken a negative shift, but I promise we're going to switch it back up soon. But I just wanted to take a second to address, like, I feel like mental health in Waterloo um, can be a bit of a struggle because of all the things I've mentioned before when it comes to job stress, school stress, like interviewing stress, feeling like you're not doing enough, comparison, all of that stuff. It's not the best concoction for a happy life and good mental health. So I think it's important to be mindful of it. I feel like loneliness is real too, especially in first and second year when maybe you haven't found your footing yet, you haven't found your people. A simple phone call can make you feel so much better. Like phone calling a friend from home. Uh, Parents, parents love to hear from their kids. So just picking up the phone and giving them a call, saying, hey, what's up? This is what's going on in my life. Um, Yeah, it can really lift your mood. 
All right, we made it to number 10. The last thing I wish I knew, what I would tell my younger self, is don't take things so personally. It's 99% of the time not that deep. And what I mean by that is, let's say you meet someone for the first time and they were a little bit rude to you or they gave you kind of like rubbed you the wrong way. I honestly, I think past my past self would have stressed a lot about him. They're like, oh no, like, do they not like me? Whatever. But more likely than not, it's something going on with them. Maybe they had a bad day or maybe there's something on their mind that's stressing them out that's caused them to act this way. 99% of the time, it's not about you. So don't worry about it too much. Just brush it off and move on with your life. Honestly, I feel like a lot of things became a lot simpler when I just recognized that it's not that deep. Just like not worth stressing over. If I'm not going to remember it five years from now. I'm not going to spend five more seconds thinking about it. So yeah, I think that wraps up the 10 things that I wish I knew before entering university. If I had to leave you with one thing, it would be it takes effort to build the life that you want and to build the university experience that you want. I hope these 10 kind of lessons that I wish I knew can help guide you and guide your intentions and guide your effort into building the life that you want. Final thoughts. These five years have flown by, absolutely flown by. So really just cherish, cherish it. I miss it already. I wish I could go back to first year and relive like all the crazy fun times, but life moves on. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if there's anything else you're curious about, want to know, etc. And yeah, I will try to answer your questions.